Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in the game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. So you're a philosopher? Yes. 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 I always say football is an easy game. And a lot of people probably say, well, it, if it's so easy, then why do you have all these different technical terms and technical things that are involved with the game? But quite honestly, it's blocking, it's tackling, it's catching, it's running. I think so many times in evaluating talent, ego comes into play. We're afraid to admit when we don't know everything and it's not a bad thing no one person can be an expert on everything when it comes to evaluation when it comes to evaluating players for me I, I just look at one thing can they get the job done and I, I think that's really the the one way that that you could really find out whether or not a guy could play my general philosophy with football as I've stated before in books or in anything is it is a simple game played managed and coached by complex men. What we end up doing when we assess football is we try to get so technically sound. We try to make all these decisions based on advanced analytics, things like that. Sometimes it's really simple. It's a real simple game. We like to make it complicated as far as like football people, but in the, in the sense that um, there's a lot of things that can go into a football game or a football play. There's always these guys who, who look at all the analytics, you know, they, they try to measure the, the hands, they, they look at the speed. Not one person can be an expert on every position. So I always say that it's important for us to stay in our lanes. Is this guy a winner? Does he consistently win? When you see him, do you feel like this guy is a guy who's going to get the job done? There are certain positions I know I'm better at evaluating. And because of that, I, I stick to those, and the ones that I'm not as good at evaluating, I lean on my colleagues that I hold in high esteem to fill in the gaps where I don't feel as comfortable. Uh, just like when you look at, let's say a hamburger, it's just a piece of meat, two buns, and you have a hamburger. But when you really look at, it, okay, there's different ingredients involved, and what makes flavor, make what makes it flavorful, what makes um, the bread, what makes the, the ingredients, the condiments, all those things go into making a simple hamburger. The football is the same way. And I, I like to see how the attributes that the guys show on uh, the track or, or whatever being tested, I like to see how that transfers onto the football field. And a lot of times you can see whether or not those attributes that you're seeing in, in testing really do they show up on the field. And just, it's funny when I looked at a lot of different prospects uh, throughout the time I've been doing this uh, with football game plan. We started in 2007, but one of the biggest things that just stood out to me is I go back to when I was in college and playing with a bunch of guys that I thought were really talented. And then when you see guys at the collegiate level that you're playing against, you're like, okay, um, this guy is not that good or this guy is great and then when you look at April in the draft you're like wow so and so got drafted then how come this guy didn't get drafted well he's pretty good he and then you hear oh well he came from a small school so that kind of all formulated my thought process of it doesn't matter where you play it doesn't matter who you play against it doesn't matter where you're from if you're playing football and you're good at it to me it stands out on tape that's what we do here at football game plan there are no egos we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. We know to trust our eyes. If someone, if we see something and it says, hey, that guy's fast on the field, we don't really have to see it's 40 time to know he's fast. When you're coaching a guy, do you feel that way? Playing next to a guy. So if we, we get really simple about the game and just realize that feeling, what we see, we should trust that more than any of the statistics, advanced analytics, things like that, that might deter us. We can make things look a certain way if we want them to, but one thing that does not fool us if we pay attention is our gut. And you can see that when, when you see a receiver just simply pulling away from a defensive back. How many times do you see a guy that's a 4-6 guy pulling away from a 4-2 guy? 
that shows you alone whether or not a guy could play football or he's just an athlete, a track runner, etc. So that's something I look at. I also look at pressure. I think I'm a big believer in, in the, the idea that pressure busts pipes or it brings out the best in you. And I, I think that when you take a prospect and you, you put him in a, a high pressure situation and he consistently comes through, that's something that, that you could project into the NFL. So when some people say, oh, let's say for instance, uh, if you're a quarterback coming from an Ivy League school, the first thing people will say is, well, he played against Ivy League competition or he played against lesser competition. Well, here's the things that are, tra that are translatable to the next level. Accuracy, arm strength, decision making, all of those things, it doesn't matter where you play. If you're fast in the Ivy League, you're gonna be fast in the SEC, you're gonna be fast in the NFL, speed is speed. Many times what, what happens is people become enamored with numbers. Oh well, you know he he caught for he caught 1,500 yards. Well, he must be good. Well, never mind that. You know he was playing with inferior competition. Um, oh well, this guy didn't run a fast 40 time. That's cool. When I look at film, he's blowing by everybody. We we focus on really looking at what those players are doing and who they're doing it against in order to come up with a full evaluation of who that person can be at the next level. As far as certain things I look for, like anyone, when I look for uh, assessing talent, I know what I'm good with and I know what I'm not that good with. And the guys that I can assess very well, they play in the secondary, the receiver position, and also the quarterback position. So for each of those things, I really have key points that I look for. And, and see that, that he's gonna be someone that's not gonna let you down when you need him to make that big play. So those are just some of the things that I look at. A lot of times I fall back on my own experience and I think that that's something that allows us to kind of look at things differently and understand the, the why behind what a player is doing or the why behind a, the reason why a player may not have the, the statistics that you may want him to. Um, decision making is decision making. Accuracy is accuracy. All those traits are what you're supposed to look at. The uniforms change, the players that the player is playing against change, the uh, level of competition, competition changes, I'm sorry. All those things are changed with each play, each player. But when you look at a guy and what he can do, and looking at it from a positive standpoint, honestly, you're gonna find that a lot of guys are really good football players. So those are some of the things that I look at. End of the day, I think that you have to really trust your instincts. There's times where your opinion is gonna be different from the opinion of others. Ultimately, if there's any type of, you know, any type of dissension, if we feel that another person's better at evaluating that position, then we lean towards that person because he has a track record that's proven over time. And the sad part is there's only 260 something spots in the draft each year and there's only 32 NFL teams, there's only 1600 NFL players, um, but there are so many different things that people can do to have success, whether it's playing the CFL arena, go overseas and play in, in Europe. So there's a lot of good football players, so don't just think because a guy may not play in the NFL that he's not good. You know, the head of the snake is the quarterback. That is the guy who everyone has, you know, there's commercials if you're on the NFL level. Uh, everyone's like, oh my goodness, I want to go get a jersey of that quarterback. I look for a guy who's not going to be scared for the moment. That's what I want. I want a guy that I can actually follow, whether I'm being a fan, again, coaching or playing next to the guy. So you can't dismiss any tape that comes across your desk, whether it's high school, whether it's college, whether it's pro, it doesn't matter. And I think a lot of times people get caught up in, oh, well, uh, this guy, if he was good, he'd be in the league. Well, we put together a video to disprove that um, by putting together an expansion video where we created five new NFL franchises with guys that's just on a practice squad or even not in the league. So I think one thing that makes us unique at football game plan from an evaluation standpoint, we don't care where you're, where you're from, who you are, how the tape gets to us, whether it's a huddle link or all 22 or a dude that you might meet on the subway that say, hey, I, I, I'm going on my way to work out. Check my tape out, he's showing you on his phone. We don't care if you can play, we're gonna evaluate it, we're gonna be honest, we're gonna be non-biased, we're gonna tell you what we see, and we're gonna look at it from a positive point of view because we were all in that situation where a coach had to sit us down and say, hey, you do this well, you do this well, you do this not so well, you do this not so well, here's how you can improve and here's how you can get better. And if you truly believe in that, you're gonna stand strong within that opinion 
and you'll be able to back it up. But at the end of the day, your opinion is your opinion and you need to let that remain yours and not allow others to influence what it is that, that you feel is good about a player. I want a guy who thinks on his feet and makes decisions because paralysis by analysis has killed many quality teams. So these are just some of my general simple philosophies for the game, but they're what I really hinge my football outlook on and will continue to do so. So I think from a positive outlook, a positive perspective, it allows us to not hit on a lot of prospects like people like to say, but we are in the right more often than not because we're taking the approach of how we would like to be coached and how coaches tend to view players, um, how this guy can help me win. So that's why I think we, we have a lot of success and we truly enjoy what we do. We love the game of football and everything it's about. And that's why this is a place where football makes sense.